So I've spoken this out before and I'll say it again. We are the ones called to a race, the line between the secular and the sacred. There's so much depth to that. He chose you for such a time as this to be his mouthpiece and to be his action. To go out and, and change the world around us. That's what he called us for. To change the world around us. To show them the real Jesus. The living Christ. The one who claimed to save us. The one who stretched out his arms upon the cross. We have to remember who we are. Children of the Most High. And declaring these things. That this Jesus that we sing about is the one that takes us on the road that Father has called us to. Wow. How do we get there? How do we get to that place? Worship Him. He inhabits the praises of our people. See, when, when we start praising, when we start worshiping, that's when the... That's when the principalities and powers, that's when the government starts shaking. That's when, that's when the atmosphere changes. We preach about this stuff. We talk about this stuff. We have to start living this stuff. So right now in this very moment, as, as we speak Jesus, there's something happening in that second heaven that's, that's being shaken up and being stirred. Because we're pressing through. Revelation talks about the, the aroma, the incense that rises before the Father and rests upon the throne. That, that's the prayers when we call out Jesus and things have to shift and things have to take place. That those prayers that are raised up before the Father and he, smell, and he gets a whiff of that sweet smelling aroma and says, they're praising me. They're praising me. They're worshiping me. When we call out Jesus, when we call upon his name, they're worshiping me. That's my son. They worship him. See, there's a shift that takes place. But we have to press through. We have to press and we can't let the circumstances around us govern who we are. We can't allow that. We can't allow that to take place. We have to push back. It's time for us to push back. Power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Laying these things down. Living the life that we're called to live. And stepping into that place. Wow. Where do I go from here? Thank you, Lord. I've spoken this over and over and over again. How many of y'all really want to see revival? And don't raise your hand just because you think you do. How many of y'all really want to see revival? Yes, Lord, let's go, Jesus. Maybe 50% of us. If I'm judging by what's here, maybe, maybe 60% of us. See, revival starts here. You got to understand. We, 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 we judge revival on those things we've seen from our past and those things that, that, that we see going on around us in other places and, and, we, and we want to be a part of what Jesus is doing over there. But Jesus starts right here and we start worshiping him and start calling upon his name. This shift that takes place that I'm trying to describe to you has to start right here. It has to start here because Father looks at your heart he looks at your heart. Hmm. My people who are called by my name will humble them themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Listen, this is the place where we're at. I will hear from, this is what I'm trying to describe to you right now. I will hear from heaven. That's what Father's saying. I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin. Come on. Who knows the rest? 
and heal their land. We're talking about, talking about the blood of 50 years of abortions. If we get on our hands and knees and pray and start worshiping him and start declaring who he is, Father will heal our land. We will be called a Christian nation once again. Then, we're not there yet. We need to get back what the enemy has taken from us. Don't leave me, girl. <laughs> wow. I just have this burning in my heart that if we don't let our voices be heard, don't let our voices be known, then this is all, everything we're seeing, all the momentum, all the, all, we're, we're claiming this is victory for the kingdom, right? Victory for the kingdom. But that victory will stop. And, and Father's heart will, be, will continue to be broken because his people sit there and do nothing. Hmm. Wow. We have to remember who we are. We're the ones chosen. Hmm. All right. Paul says, I'm a bondservant of Christ. I'm a bondservant of Christ. In fact, he speaks out that out several times through his, through his epistles, through his letters. And, and the same with, with James and, and Peter and Jude and, and, and Timothy. They all declare that they're a bondservant of Christ. Declaring that they, that they were once a slave, once were a slave. But Jesus bought their freedom and set them free. That's for each one of us. Listen, there's depth to the understanding that in your freedom by serving him, you're gaining so much more, okay? Your bondage is released. There's a, there's a kingdom concept here, okay? A kingdom concept that it's, it's through our choice to serve him that we gain our freedom. Romans 1.6, let me jump in here, Romans 1.6. Paul, a bondservant of, of Christ Jesus, okay? Bonds, and in fact, I want to I clarify a, what a bondservant, the definition of a bondservant. A bondservant is, is someone who, who was a slave that's been set free. Who was a slave that's been set free. But the term bondservant is, is when they choose to return to their master and serve them in their freedom. Return to their master and serve them in their freedom, okay? So setting the stage, Paul, a bondservant of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle, called as an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. Called the, so, so, so there's this transition in this place through this freedom, but through the choice, because God chose us first, that we choose to return back to him. We lay the old man down. We step into the, the calling the Father has for us to choose to, to serve him so that we can fulfill the mission of the gospel. Amen. Called as an apostle. And I, and I, ha, I have to make a, a definition here for just a moment. There's, there's, there's so many people out there that, that, that call themselves an apostle. And I, have to, I just have to put this disclaimer out there. They, they call themselves an apostle. And I want you to understand that apostle is a name given to you by others, not by yourself. This is the context Paul is talking about. A, a, apostle in this context that Paul is talking about right here is a verb. It's an action word, Okay. It's not a noun. It's not meant to describe Paul. It's meant to describe what Paul is doing, okay? Because he chose to be a bondservant. Paul, a bondservant of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand, which Father promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, who was born of a descendant of David according to the flesh, who was declared the son of God with power, 
power in the name of Jesus, okay? But power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Christ, Lord Jesus, our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through whom we have received grace and apostleship. There's that verb again. Apostleship. To bring about the obedience of faith. How many of y'all have the obedience of faith? That's a, that, that's a tough one right there. That's a tough one right there. Laying your life down. Okay, all these things we've been preaching about. Dying to the old man to step into this, this choice to serve him in your freedom. Not as, a, not as a slave, but as a free man. Paul's talking about. To whom we have, we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles in behalf of his name. Among you whom also are the called of Jesus Christ. See, this, in this place of the Father's kingdom, the kingdom of God, freedom, freedom becomes a choice. We choose to serve him. We choose to worship him. But, it, but, but that freedom and that place of freedom and that, 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 that choice of, of, of what we're stepping into cost us everything. Okay? Summing up a few things here. But through that, that place of freedom we gain a greater level of responsibility. That's where the apostleship comes in. We gain this greater level of responsibility. See, to us, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the world, on the world side, living, looking at it from the eyes of the world, to us, it doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. That, that we choose to serve the master, that, 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 that causes us to be, a, to be a slave to him, but that's not, that, that's not the context that Father's talking about. That we have greater freedom because Father has in, invested in us. The Lord has invested in you. Follow me for a second. And when he invested you, in you, he wants a return on his investment, okay? There's a, there's a place of righteousness here, okay? And when we handle his investment well, when, we become, when, when, when he looks down upon us and says, well done, my good and faithful servant. When we handle his investment well, he entrusts us with greater portions, greater levels, this glory to glory, because we step into it wholeheartedly, both feet, we step into what he's entrusted to us. And carrying that out and declaring who he is, being the light amongst the darkness and all those things he's called us to. That next level, that next place, but understand this, the more that we've been given, okay, the more that we've been given, the, wow, even in your freedom, okay, even in your freedom, the more that we've been given, the more that will be required. We know this through the parable, the more that's required because he entrusts us with more. He's called us more. He's called us to that next level, that next level, that next level, that next level, that next place. See, we've received this free gift of freedom, but that's not for us to keep. Freely we receive, freely we give. We need to give it away. We need to give away. How do we do that? We become bond servants. We become servants of Christ, servants of Christ, servants of Christ. Remember, Jesus said, I didn't come to be served, I come to serve. When he chose you, when he gave you his heart, listen, when he gave you his heart, okay, the, the very definition of salvation, all right? You accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He comes and he, he gives you his heart. He lives inside of you, the very definition of salvation. But when, when he chose you, okay, when, when he gave you his heart, when he chose us, listen, that's when he gave us that servant heart. That's when we have, to, we have to die to self, okay, so we can step into this place of, of serving. Serving and bond servant. Bond servant. As he chose us, he chose us to, to, to serve. That's how much he loves us. That, that when he died upon the cross, he died as a servant. He died as a servant, a savior servant. You remember what they said? But, but this man, the, the, the king of the Jews, the, the son of God, all these things that, that you say who you are, but yet you won't bring yourself down upon, uh, off the cross. 
Bring yourself off that cross, Jesus. Why, why did you have to walk to that death? Because, because he was the servant of the Most High, that he had to show us the way to the Father's heart through the, through the, the bond servant, through the, through the choice of our freedom. See, it isn't until you become a bond servant that you step into apostleship, that next level, that next place. You have to, you, you, you can't lead others except by serving. There's so many people out there that want to step into the leadership role. It doesn't work that way. Let, let me tell you, it doesn't work that way. You start by cleaning the toilets. Let me just, let me just make it plain. Jesus washed their feet, right? Jesus washed their feet. As the example of who he, he says, this you won't understand right now, but you soon will. You soon understand. When I stretch out my arms upon the cross, I wash my feet so that you can see the greater level of what I'm about to accomplish for you. For you. Wow. See, when we chose him, he gave us his heart. The heart of a servant. And that's what he's calling into action. That becomes the action. That becomes the, that becomes the, the, the action word. Holy Spirit here wants out, but he, he wants out through servanthood, not through, not through authoritative, I don't know if I can describe this well. By, it's by giving the cup of, a, of cold water, Right? The, the lowest places, feeding the homeless, all those kind of things that, that Jesus was the example of. He didn't stand upon the, upon the rooftop of the temple declaring that he is the Son of God. He didn't do any of that. He came with a humble heart as a servant, a bondservant, showing us his lo- the Father's love, the Father's love as a servant. Because he cares for even when we have a hangnail, even when we stub our toe, he loves us so much. Hmm. That's the heart of the Father, showing one another the love that we have. You can rest your fingers, girl, if you want to. It's up to you. Living from the place of a servant's heart. That's what will totally change who you are. If we want to get there, we want to get where a father's taking us, lay everything down and serve. That's what will change who you are. That's what will change the atmosphere around you. A bond servant for Christ. You know, that's when the rewards come. We all sit back and, Lord, why aren't you answering my prayers? Why aren't you doing this? Why, why, why? All these little old me pity parties that we're having. But yet we forget. We forget that, 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 the Father, that Jesus didn't come to, to fill those, those worldly desires that we have to start by serving. Ephesians three fourteen. How many of all brought your Bibles with you today? Look. I even read from the paper pages just a minute ago. In fact, I was looking at my Bible cover just a little bit ago as as I've, it's got a zipper around it as I began to unzip it, the edge of it actually ripped. I'm thinking, oh my God, I've had that for a long time. That's near and dear to my heart, just like the pages of of my Bible, the back pages are falling out. I have to do something about that. But you know, it's, that's my manna. That's my fresh manna. This is my, other than my Catholic Bible, this was my first, first Bible. And I've got so many notes. I've got so many things written in here. So many things that I've learned. So many things that, that people have taught. And I write all these notes in here. I don't, this is, this is sacred to me. I can say that. This is the word of God. This is sacred to me. Not the book, but what's written in the book. I understand that what's written in the book because this is life this is my life this is my life okay Ephesians three fourteen. so I kneel humbly in awe before the father of our Lord Jesus the Messiah the perfect father of every father and child in heaven and earth even those that are unborn I want you to understand that Amen. even those that are unborn it says every 
every child, father, uh, every father and child, even those that haven't seen the light of day. And I pray that he would unveil within you, within you, everybody raise your hand, how many yous do we have here today? Within you. And I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. There's that power. Power. When we speak the name of Jesus. Then by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside of you. It will be released. It's already deep inside you, but it's being released being released. There's something about that. Being released. And the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. The resting place of his love. What is his love founded in? It's founded in serving others. Okay. Then you will be empowered to discover that what every holy one experiences, the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all of its dimensions. You see what's unfolding here? What Paul is trying to describe as this, this relationship as a bond servant or the father? That this, this magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all of its dimensions. These are, these are things that eye hasn't seen nor ear has heard. These are the things that Paul is talking about. How deeply intimate and far-reaching is his love. Far-reaching. And I speak again, even for those that aren't, haven't been born yet. And how enduring and inclusive it is. Endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. We don't even understand it. That peace that passes all understanding. This extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request. A most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all. He will outdo them all. And his miraculous power constantly energizes you. I hang on to that. I'll take that. Even if I didn't take anything, I'll take that right there. I'll take that right there. His miraculous power will constantly energize me. The Energizer Bunny. Now we offer up to you, up to God, all the glorious praise that rises from every church, every church, every church in every generation through Jesus Christ and all that will yet manifest through time and eternity. Even 50 years later, when the prayers of the saints are being unveiled today, come on, every generation that, that chooses to praise him and declare his name above every other name, that my Jesus is above my circumstances, and the greater things that are released because I declare that in my life, I declare that in my life, because I choose to serve him, I'm servant. I choose to serve him. I choose to serve him. The other day, we were worshiping and we were singing that song. He inhabits the praises of his people. I'm not going to sing it for you. He inhabits the praises of his people. And we've all heard this preach before. In fact, I've preached this myself many times. As, as it it helps us understand, okay, that, that, that when we enter into this place of praise, that, that Father hears our praise and, and it puts a smile on his face because he's calling out that my people are praising me again. But I want to introduce something to you in, in, a, in a whole other aspect that the, the Father showed me. Maybe even a new definition for bond servants. So stay with me for just a second. As, as we enter into this place of, of worship, just like, just like a few minutes ago, worship where you, where you forget about all the circumstances around you, and you just, it's just you and the Lord, and you're, you're there in that place. 
The Lord showed me something that I just keep pondering. You know, when it, it hits you and the light bulb turns on, even though you've heard that scripture, you heard that over and over and over again, and all of a sudden something turns on. And here's what I thought as I, as I kind of make it, as I kind of speak to you the same thing, that the same page that we may all be on at the moment, that when we enter into this place, this, this place of worship and, and, and we start worshiping that, that God really does show up, right? We, we can say that. The presence of God shows up when we enter into that place and, and there we are in unity together, just like in the upper room and, and, and the presence of God so strong in this place and we're singing this, these most amazing, amazing lullabies to our Father because we love Him so much. And the presence of God shows up. I mean, we really do love, at least I can say this for myself, we really do love great worship around here, right? That's, that's just a part of our service. That's, just, that, that's, what, that's what, for me, that's what breaks the crust off. That's what, that's what helps me enter into what, what Father wants to speak to me. And we enjoy that. And there's nothing wrong with that because it helps us go to this deeper place with the Lord. This deeper place, no matter what our circumstances are, no matter what our circumstances, no matter what we, the baggage, whatever baggage we carried in with us, worship still helps us to step into that place. But here's what the Lord showed me, okay? Here's what the Lord showed me. That, that it's, it's really not about the, the, the great music. As much as we love Amanda, it's really not about Amanda and, and the worship team. And it, it's really not about the, the wonderful words that we're singing, and the really great songs. And it's not even about all the people that, were, that, that are singing and everyone being on key. Because remember what David said, it's to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I can fit that well. I, I, I try to make a joyful noise to the Lord. Some of you are sitting next to me when I'm singing out up here. Think I'll probably plug in your ears, but that's okay. And yes, the Lord loves all of those things. He loves all of those things. But there's so much more that we're missing the point. I'm going somewhere with this. Missing the point. So the Lord, as, as we were singing that song, He inhabits the praise of our people, the Lord showed me something the other day. And, and just picture this with me for a second. This, this little old widow woman out in the field, after, after the harvesters have come by, and out in the field, and, and she's picking up the leftover crops. And as she's slaving in the hot sun, just to feed her family, okay? Just to feed her family. She's picking, all the, she's picking up, gleaning all the, the leftovers. And as she's doing that, she, she's in a place of, uh, she's in a whole other realm. She's, she's not letting her circumstances be, be governed by what's around her, okay? She's not letting her, her circumstances control her. Yet she's in a place where she's singing this most amazing hymn, just her and the Father together. She, she, she's out there trying to fulfill, trying to put food on her table from the, the only means that she knows, but she's singing this most amazing t- hymn and she's filled with joy. Picture this, doing this menial task. She's filled with joy. And, and, and then the Lord reminded me about Paul and Silas. After they've been, Paul says, after they've been, they've been beaten to near death, and here, here they were, they were thrown in a jail cell and, and, and their circumstances looked dim and grim because the next day they're headed to the death sentence. Okay, they're going to be hung at that point. And there's, there's Paul and Silas as they, as they choose not to be in their circumstances, okay? They choose not to be in the, the, the place where they're at. With and they start singing these hymns to the Father. They start singing these hymns. And the power of God shows up. There's the power of God that shows up. Why? Because they were singing out of their desperation? Why? And the Lord just showing me these things. Did the, did the Lord visit them just like he did with Adam in the cool of the day? In the cool of the morning? And just because they sang a song? I, I don't think so. Or was it because, listen, or was it because they... They laid their life down and chose to serve him in their circumstances. That they stepped away from the old life and, 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 and in their freedom, they stepped into this place of bondservant and there's something released. There's something released in the atmosphere. 
And the presence of God shows up in this, this undeniable, this tangible feeling. How many of y'all felt that before as you're worshiping? That tangible feeling of the Father that you know he's right there. You know he's giving you a big old hug right now because, because you've, you've laid those things down. You laid your circumstances down and it's just you and him. Nobody else around and you're singing this most beautiful song. Even if the rest of the church is singing. You're singing because your heart is calling you to sing because you're releasing these things and you're stepping out in your freedom because you choose to serve him. So here's what the Lord showed me as as we were singing that he inhabits the praises of his people, that it's, it's not about the song. And it's certainly not about your effort because you can't get into that heavenly place through your effort. You have to understand that. You're not saved by your works, okay? That's what I'm trying to say here. It's not about your effort. It's only by grace. It's his grace. When he hears, when he hears your, when his heart connects with your heart, he hears your cries out to him, that he releases his presence to come down and be there with you because he loves you, because you chose to serve him. You chose to honor him. You chose to worship him by his grace. Listen, even when you didn't feel like worshiping today, or even when you, when you knew that you messed up this week, you knew you really screwed up this week, yet you chose to come and worship him, he shows up. Because that's who he is. He shows up. He shows up in that place of your brokenness because you chose to serve him. Not because of your works. Because of your obedience. Look at Paul and Silas. Because of their obedience, he showed up. The, the worship, on the hymn that they were singing was the catalyst that connected to the Father. The catalyst. But because of their obedience, they chose to worship him in their freedom. Even though they, the circumstances around them said, oh, you're locked up in jail and you're near death. You're, you're going to die tomorrow. I choose to worship you in my freedom. <clears throat> See, that's what changes the circumstances around you. That's what changes the atmosphere. We keep talking about that, changing the atmosphere. That we're not gonna, we're not gonna be in that mumbling and grumbling place, okay? We're not gonna, we're not, we're not gonna get caught up in that gossip realm. We're not gonna get caught up into these things that, that, that the doctors have spoken over us, Charlene. We're not gonna get caught up in those things. We say no to that. We say no to every bit of that. We say no to cancer right now in Jesus' name. I'm not living in that place. I'm living in this place of freedom that Jesus already paid the price for. I choose to worship you, and therefore our covenant-keeping God comes and makes his presence known. Amen. That's the heart of a bondservant right there. He inhabits the praises of his people because we choose to serve him. That's loving him. That I will praise you so even the rocks won't cry out. Wow. The time has now come. The time has now come. I'm preluding into something. To determine who you're going to serve. The time has now come. That things are escalating. Things are ramping up. Things are, things are getting to that point where you have to choose. The the narrow gate or the wide gate, okay? The choice. The time has now come. John 4, 23 says, but the hour is coming and now is. Speaking today, June 23rd. Is it the 23rd? What is it? 26. 26. June 26. I lost lost a week, sorry. (laughs) June 26. The, the, The... the hour is coming and now is at June 26, 2022 when the worshipers, worshipers, who worship the Father in spirit and in truth. We've all heard this before. Look at it from a different sense. 
Look at this from the definition of a bondservant, okay? When the true worshiper, the true, when Father hears your heart, you connect with him, and he, and he sets you free from the circumstances around you, worshiping him. When the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. They must, must worship him in spirit and truth. Or you may get to that door about to enter in, and there's, there's, there's Jesus standing there and says, I don't know you. But Father, I, I gave your little ones a glass of cold water. I don't know you. You didn't worship me in your brokenness. Yeah, it's easy to worship him and when, when, when everything is going well and there's no COVID around and you got a new car sitting in the driveway and you just got a raise. It's easy to worship him then. What about in our brokenness? Declaring who he is, that, that I worship you, Father, even in, my, even in my broken place, even in my sickness, even in my, my place where I, I can't pay my bills, I still worship you. Heart of a bondservant. Living from that place of freedom. Yet, you're not free. It costs you everything. See, that's what breaks down the prison walls. That's what will restore your joy. That is what changes the atmosphere around you. That is what fills your heart with love that overflows with joy for even, the, even the, the ones that you can't stand their smell. Oh, did I say that? Did you go over and give them a hug when they're, when they're, when they're all, all sick and dirty and all that? You go over and give them a hug because you want to show them the love of the Father. And Bobby was telling a story Friday night about, I think it was Brazil, when he was called, the Lord told him to lay hands on someone that had leprosy. And, and, and in, in the flesh, we're all there. In the flesh, Bobby, can I tell this? In the flesh, Bobby's, Bobby's arguing with the Holy Spirit, saying, Lord, I don't want to do that because I don't want to get leprosy. I don't want to do that. You don't think that the power of the, of the Most High God is gonna, not going to protect you from that? Well, it's easy for me to stand up here and talk about it, but believe me, I've fought that battle too before. I'm off on a tangent again. See, but that's really what changes the circumstances around you. That's what changes the atmosphere in that place of, of worshiping him no matter what is going on. The heart of a bondservant. Worshiping him in your obedience. Not because you have to, but because you choose to you may not even want to but you choose to there's a difference there really is a difference there's sometimes when we don't we don't feel like worshiping him but we still press in right am i speaking truth we still press in and and even when we don't want to but we choose to he still shows up i've been to i've been to different conferences in different places that i didn't want to be at but i knew that the lord was calling me to be there and I still, when, when that speaker, and maybe may not even been a very good speaker, okay? But I still get that, that gold nugget. That, Father, there's, there's still something that's spoken that, that rings in my ears that, that, that I'm able to reach out and grasp hold of because the Father had that waiting for me. And I was obedient. Each one of us. Worshiping Him through our obedience. Walking with Him in the cool of the day to finding our freedom. All because we choose to serve him. Amanda, I need you to come back, girl. I'm going to try to land this plane. Sorry, honey. You see, the, the promise is being fulfilled, okay? That Holy Spirit within you that, that, that is waiting to, to become this power that we're talking about, this power over sickness, over darkness, over, over the lies, and all that. As we become the action, Holy, Holy Spirit just waiting, as we become the action, there's, there's, 
there's, as this, this shift takes place, we become the promise fulfilled. Okay, We become the promise fulfilled as the action of Holy Spirit through us because we are the action word. We're the action. We're the, we're the hands and feet. We're the one that Father has put into action to go and do these things for Him. Not that He needs us. Because believe me, you tell Him no, you tell Him no, He's going to go find somebody else that will do it. But this, now, the time is now when he's looking for the, the worshipers who worship him in spirit and truth. The time is now for the church to join together in unity. The time is now. We need to push back now more than ever before. We need to be laying hands on the leprosy. We need to be declaring these things. We need to be speaking life over those pregnant women. There's so many things, and, and, and I'm not trying to sum any of it up. I'm trying to let Holy Spirit speak to you as to what you need to be doing because you chose Him as a, in your freedom as a bondservant. So look at it from this context. Today is the day of your salvation. There's so much depth that I don't even have time to unpack that. But look at it in that context. You chose him today. Jesus said, pick up your cross daily. Okay, you chose him. You, you need to make this choice daily. Daily. Choose to serve him. That greater level, that greater experience waiting for him because you serve him in your freedom. It doesn't matter where we're at. It doesn't matter what level we're at. You could be ground floor. You could be 50-year Christian. doesn't matter where you're at. Our daddy's just waiting for someone who will give him their yes. That merry prayer. Yes, Lord, do unto me as you so desire. Just looking for your yes. For us to stand up. And be the one that Father called us to be. The one who died for us.